everybody, welcome to today's video. I am super, super, super excited to bring you guys today's video because I think I'm gonna call this video the Makeup Dictionary. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go through a bunch of tools, um, products and techniques and explain them to you, why we use them and why they're great and why you should use them in your everyday makeup routine. And honestly, everybody's is different. Everybody's lifestyle is different. You're not gonna use all of these, but this will just help you understand if you like want to get more into makeup and if you like watch like enjoy watching youtube videos these are a lot of sayings and um techniques that we use and that we say and you know you might not understand them like my mom was watching the mistakes i made um brow video i'll throw that up in the cards um and she was like what's a spoolie you know so like there's just things like that that to like people that have watched youtube for a long time like for me i i'm personally self-taught on youtube on how to do makeup and you know like i didn't go take a class and really back in like the 70s 80s and 90s the only people that really knew about these things if they even existed at that time were makeup artists and because we didn't have social media and youtube and instagram this they didn't diffuse and now that we have those things they're a lot more common they're used so much more like they're so accessible to the public now and so yeah i'm not a makeup artist but this is just um what i have to say about these things why i use them in my routine daily and why they might help you so let's just go ahead and get into the video all right so the first thing that i'm going to be talking about is a spoolie so this is what a spoolie looks like it kind of looks like a mascara wand think of it um as the equivalent as a mascara wand for your eyelashes as a spoolie is for your brows a mascara wand um disperses product through your eyelashes it combs them and it makes them look nice. That's what a spoolie does for your brows. It disperses brow product through them and it almost creates little lines with the product um, to make them look like brow hairs. And it makes everything look so much natural, so much more natural, so much more put together and they are a blessing. If you don't feel like going ahead and buying one of these uh, spoolies in a set, you could go ahead and pick up a tester at Sephora, Ulta, even the Kohl's um, in the makeup area. This is what I used for a very long time when I did not have access or the availability to buy a spoolie in a set. So that's why brow pencils most usually come with spoolies on one side because they just work so much better with spoolies. And honestly, spoolies don't have to be just for your brows. They could also be for your mascara. Like I specifically use this tester just for my mascara to comb out my mascara because they're great and they're multitaskers and they're great. So yeah spoolies that is the definition of a spoolie all right next we want to talk about the beauty sponge now beauty blender which is a pink egg shaped think about it like this it's this shape except for with an egg shaped at the bottom like it looks like this except for it's pink um and it doesn't have this thing on the end however it's twenty dollars so that's why i own a drugstore beauty sponge but honestly nowadays they make beauty sponges at the drugstore that are just as good i'll give you some examples there's l'oreal there's flower beauty real techniques eco tools all of those sponges are a plus in my book and you know you don't have to go out and spend twenty dollars on a sponge anymore now you could spend five or seven dollars instead the most expensive sponge that i've seen at the drugstore was ten dollars i think and that's not that bad compared to the beauty blender so really this is a revolutionary um thing and it totally changed the game of makeup i um did a whole video about beauty sponges beauty sponges 101 i'll link it up in the cards um it's fantastic and it blends out your makeup so seamlessly and it really pushes it into the skin i used the, i use this today i use this for my concealer you could even use this to for powder now you could use it for your highlight you could use this for you could use it for anything that you want to it is such a multitasking tool i don't want to spend too much time on that because i did a full video on it already um, but now let's talk about some brushes that we use for our eyes specifically um, <laughs> Because you know if you watch eye tutorials or eye makeup tutorials, which I don't watch them very often But whenever I do like they they always throw out like what brushes they're using and then they'll go into the shade So if you're just confused about 
what brushes they're even talking about, this is for you. So, a crease brush. This one is from Perfusion, I think. It came in like a set. And it's a great brush. It's a fluffy brush, basically. See how it kind of um, tapers out in the end? Ooh, it's dirty. <laughs> I used it today. Um, it tapers out and it's very, very fluffy. And it's just there to disperse co color in the transition area. What's the transition area, ask? It is the crease between your brow bone and your lid. And that is your crease and that is where you put your transition shade. And your transition shade is usually a light color that can easily blend into your darker colors and your lighter colors where you put those on your eye depending on what kind of look you're doing if it's smoky or if it's just a natural look. Did I go too far? <laughs> but that's a crease brush. A shader brush is really, really nice for packing on color or just for dis dispersing color on the outer corner. You could use a shader brush um, to pack color on the brow bone. Really, you could use a shader brush for anything. You could even use it for your lower lash line if you wanted to. A shader brush is one of those awesome multitasker brush brushes that are just fantastic. A smudge brush is something that you would use on your lower lash line to smudge color under or on your upper lash line to smudge color under. It's also great for adding color to the outer corner because it's such a small area on your eye and it is just such a precise way to pack color there. And lastly, you have the flat brush. And what you would use these for is for packing on shimmer shades onto the lid. Now, you could do this by spraying your brush down and that will make it look foiled. What's the difference between a foil shade and a shimmer shade? So here's a regular shimmer. That is just a regular shimmer swatched regularly. Now I'm going to take that flat eyeshadow brush. I'm gonna take the same color. So there it is. And I'm going to spray it down with, you could use any setting spray that you want. And you could honestly even use water. So now it's a wet brush and it's gonna drip a little bit. It's gonna look a little funky, but it's going to apply so smoothly onto the eye. <laughs> Look at the difference between that and that. Now, the shimmer, it's still great quality even whenever it's not swatched with the foil, but look at it when it is foiled. You're welcome, and that is why you can use a wet brush. All right, the next thing that we wanna talk about is Primer? Yeah, we're gonna talk about primer. Now, there are many different types of primer. There is a primer that smooths and evens out the skin, kinda does an all-in-one for you. For that, I'd recommend Revlon Photo Ready. I think I mentioned this in the, drug the Gems of the Drugstore video. That was done last month, I'm pretty sure, or in May, I can't remember. It was done a while ago. Um, but you see, it's just a basic white primer. A lot of primers kind of look like Elmer's glue. And those are the types of primers that kind of just blend into the skin, smooth everything out, um, and create a very nice kind of silky canvas for your makeup. And it really does hold on to your makeup. It like sucks everything to like your face, so it like it lasts longer, and it just looks better. Like it just smooths over the skin better. Whether you're using a sponge, a brush, or even your fingers, it just applies so much nicer. There's also hydrating primers. Um, and everything is labeled very clearly um, in makeup, and especially in the drugstore. Like usually hydrating primers are in blue packaging. Um, and you know, you could also use like a serum. You could use an oil. Heck, you could even use a moisturizer as your primer. This one's from Pond's. Like, it doesn't have to be anything special. Just use something to prep your face for makeup. Along with that eyeshadow primer, I am going to apply this eyeshadow primer to one side of my hand, and I'm going to apply some eyeshadow there, and then I'm also going to apply um, eyeshadow on the other side of my hand where there is no eyeshadow primer. So that's the side with the eyeshadow primer. So this is with the eyeshadow primer. Look how smoothly that went on. This is without the eyeshadow primer. See just how much more color 
like intense it is with the eyeshadow primer. Sorry, my swatches are horrible. But <laughs> do you see primer, no primer, primer, no primer. And it does make a difference. Let's talk about the difference between contour and bronzer. Contour is usually cooler toned and depending on your skin tone, it could be harder to find a contour at the drugstore versus um, lighter skin tones per se. So um, really it's kind of hard to find a contour at all at the, uh, at the drugstore because they don't have those cooler tones. Usually they have those more warmer tones that are bronzers. But if you do happen to find a cooler toned brown, um, then it would probably work well for you. And if you have deeper skin tones, then maybe they'll have a little bit more red in it, a little bit, um, just more deeper, deeper tones for those undertones um, where you could find contour. The difference between contour and bronzer is contour carves out your face. It sculpts the, your face. Uh, bronzer just warms up the face, makes you look a little bit more sun-kissed, a little bit more glowy, a little bit more alive. I don't use bronzer on a day-to-day -day basis because it can make my skin look muddy because I have freckles, but if you don't have freckles, <clears throat> use bronzer as much as you want. I'm jealous. Um, I prefer to use blush though with my freckles. Uh, but yeah, so that's different. That's the difference between contour and bronzer. Highlighter. Highlighter is so common nowadays and it's a really big thing. It's kind of honestly changed the makeup game, but my mom did not know what highlighter was. And I feel like only makeup artists would know what highlighter was back then because I know it existed. It just wasn't common between like for the rest of the public, you know? Um, and I am part of that public, by the way, because I didn't know what highlighter was until I started watching makeup videos on YouTube. Well, highlighter basically highlights the high points of your face. So, for example, this is a bronzer, actually, that I use for a highlighter because it's a light shade. Um, it's lighter than my skin tone. Actually, I think like it is actually my skin tone. Um, you don't want to use anything darker than your skin tone to highlight. You can use any brush for highlighter. I remember whenever I didn't have as much makeup or brushes, I used the e.l.f. blending brush, and I would just take the edge of this brush, actually, here, you know what, I'm gonna use this instead. And I would just kind of dust it on the tops of my cheekbones, and then I would take my blush brush, and I would blend it out, all right? Now, nowadays they have, <laughs> nowadays, nowadays I have a highlighting brush and there's an e.l.f. highlighting brush for three bucks that you could buy and all you do is focus it at the top of your cheekbones, which is a high point of your face. You could bring it back towards your temples a little bit and to make it more, look more natural, you can just blend it out and buff it into the skin in circular motions and that's all you gotta do. Um, nose highlights are very popular now. Um, I like them, I think they're cute, but I do have a larger nose. <laughs> so I just have to be aware that whenever I'm highlighting my nose, I'm accentuating my nose, I'm accenting it. Um, and you know, with natural, with more natural highlighters like this, I can just dust them up onto my forehead above my brows. And I think it looks really nice and gives a really nice dewy glow to the skin. Um, and that's kind of, you know, a little just on highlighter, you know, a little taste, uh, Test, taste, test, taste, test, taste, test, taste, test. It's a little taste, taste, test, taste, test for you on highlighter. <laughs> I can't talk today, guys. I've filmed too many videos today. Not too many. There's no such thing as filming too many videos. But yeah, I'm. I've been talking for a long time now. Oh, <sighs> okay. Liquid lipstick. I bet most people that have never watched a makeup video don't know what liquid lipstick is. So it's a liquefied lipstick. I don't own a liquid lipstick anymore. I just did a declutter, throw it up in the cards for you guys. I just did a declutter and I decluttered my only liquid lipstick because I don't like them because they're drying. Most of them are at least, the ones that I've tried. Um, but anyway, so it's a liquefied lipstick. This is like the closest thing that I have to a liquid lipstick. Um, it's a liquefied lipstick and it dries down as it sets onto your lips to where it's completely matte, it is completely transfer proof, and that's the only difference between a lipstick and a liquid lipstick. And liquid lipsticks usually come in these kinds of tubes. They almost look like they're in a lip gloss packaging, except for it's a liquid lipstick that is totally the opposite of a gloss. Setting spray. 
setting spray is definitely a new thing that we do and you know all you do is you set your face now this particular setting spray is the essence keep it perfect makeup fixing spray and it has a very very strong mist and i have to back up quite a bit in order for it to not ruin my makeup because it's so strong um but it is a very nice setting spray it makes me look very dewy and hydrated and I like that. Um, just, you know, the diff be aware that there's different types of setting sprays. There's setting sprays that make your makeup last all day long. There are setting sprays that are dewy and make you look hydrated. And all setting sprays make your makeup meld together, make them look like one with your skin. All setting sprays do that because they're all that um, liquid that is being put on top of powder, except for because it's doing it in a spray, it's not going to make anything pill up or look cakey. It's gonna make everything look less cakey, but there are ones that are mattifying, there are ones that are illuminating, hydrating, um, and long lasting. Four. <laughs> and I'm sure there's more out there, but those are just the four that I can think of on, off the top of my head. Translucent powders. So translucent powders have been around for a very long time. They're just more commonly used now, especially loose powders. Translucent loose powders. And they're used for different things. You can just use them to set all over with a big fluffy powder brush. Now you could also use them with smaller tapered brushes and more specific areas. Like I usually only use loose translucent powders underneath my eyes, especially the Maybelline Fit Me one, because it just sets it so nicely and it brightens just a little bit and it doesn't make anything look old and crepey. Um, I mean, if you apply too much, then duh, yes it will, but if you don't apply too much, then you'll be fine. Now there's also this thing called baking, and baking is whenever you take a sponge, usually a sponge, and you'll go into the powder, um, just like this, and you'll get some of that powder on your sponge. Oh, too much, too much. You'll get some of that powder on your sponge, and then you will basically put it on your under eye. Am I gonna do it? Am I gonna do it for the video? <sighs> well, I'm gonna look like a crazy lady anyway, so here it goes. Okay, and what you do is you just press it underneath your eye and basically it is going to set your concealer like nothing else and it's going to set it in place forever, forever and ever and ever. <laughs> and that is what baking does, it bakes your concealer. So if you ever hear people saying, I'm gonna go bake my face, that's, this is, this is what they mean by that. Okay, I need to dust this off. <laughs> Cause I don't wanna ruin my makeup. I actually really like my makeup today. Um, but you can see it's gonna brighten and it's going to smooth out pores depending on what type of powder you use. The type of powder that I used, it's definitely gonna do that. Oh, look, now I'm cakey on one side of the face because I already put powder on. <laughs> Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. I love you guys. Lastly, the thing that I want to talk about is the difference between a tinted moisturizer and a foundation. So a tinted moisturizer is a very hydrating formula of foundation with very light coverage basically. This is from Neutrogena, it's their Hydro Boost Hydrating Tint. Some are called BB creams, CC creams, you know, they're all kind of like those lighter coverage formulas maybe with benefits in them and specifically tinted moisturizers they have hydrating properties cc creams color correct um bb creams have like benefits to your skin because they're beauty balms they either have spf in them or they have like antioxidants things like that to really give your skin that kick of what it needs plus the coverage foundations this one is from flower beauty it's their light illusion foundation i have a review on it i'll throw it up in the cards <laughs> I keep talking about <laughs> my other videos. Foundations are geared more towards covering and the overall finish of the skin, not the health of the skin, you know? So that's really the difference between tinted moisturizers and foundations. These have been around for a very long time. I don't know how long tinted moisturizers have been around, but I feel like they're newer to the drugstore. I mean, they've been around for a decade or so now maybe a decade and a half, but still not everybody knows what they are. So that there you go. Now, if there is anything that I missed that you have questions about, let me know down below and I'll do a part two to this video. Let me know if you guys enjoyed this video, if you found it helpful. I really, really hope that you found it helpful and maybe you'll, you know, have your 
makeup, vocab, up to date, up to snuff. Now you'll be like all the cool kids. I'm not a cool kid, by the way. I, I mean, I'm not a makeup artist. This is just what I have learned over the years. And I just remember struggling like, what's a crease brush? And like, what's a beauty sponge? What's a like what's a primer like why do you need this um and like baking you know like that stuff was so confusing to me and i remember just spending hours and hours just watching videos like just trying to learn just trying to figure things out and of course now i have learned so i just wanted to condense it all into one video for you guys so you wouldn't have to spend hours and hours like i did <laughs> i really hope you guys enjoyed this video i love you guys so much and i'll see you in my next one bye